All right, so this is one of the first YouTube videos for the Variance Hammer channel. Um, this channel is intended to be sort of a supplement to the longer form content that's available at www.variancehammer.com for the people who are coming to this from YouTube versus coming from the uh, blog the other way around. And really what this is intended to be is looking at some of the things that are hard to express in the written word. So really visual things. As, as readers of the blog know, I've sort of gotten into 3D printing as a hobby. Um, some terrain projects and things like that where it's really much much easier to show things on video than it is to describe them. Uh, so the first couple of these videos are just intended to be sort of tooling around getting used to the idea of YouTube. I did promise that the readers of Variance Hammer that this wouldn't turn into the sort of classic 40k blog where there's a guy sitting in a gaming chair ranting at his webcam. So you get the other version of this which is um, my hands sort of disembodied looking down at a hobby mat. So what we're going to look at today is I've been uh, getting the asset drop sort of monthly miniature boxes for it's probably over a year now. I reviewed the first set I got and I think it's worth sort of revisiting those and seeing how they've changed and sort of getting my feelings on how the actual boxes um, have continued to work. Are they good value? Are they good you know, uh, as a hobby supply? Things like that. So. We've got two of them here. Um, they came in today in their sort of classic um, neon greenish yellow packaging. So we'll go ahead and slice that open. Uh, I get two sets. I get the standard, it's what's called the discovery set, which is just um, various hobby supplies and sort of around a theme. And then also the heroin set, which is non cheesecake female miniatures. So this is the discovery set, which we're gonna go ahead and open first because um, I think this is the one that's more broadly applicable to everybody. So I'll try to get this open. It's usually pretty securely packed. All right, so when you get this box, uh, the first part and the thing I like the most about it, this is the February 2020 stuff, is you get this painting guide, which takes you through what we have in the box and then also sort of some ideas for what to paint. Um, so this is really nice as sort of getting to use the things. It's always sort of themed around a particular topic. Um, you get some great techniques. You get um, a lot of different advice. The, the painting in it I like. It's sort of the, I call it the old school sort of heavy metal um, designs where it was accessible enough that you can imagine doing this but it will still push your skills. Versus the sort of like, no, why are you even trying um, approach. So then you get this. Everything comes wrapped in some straw. Um, there is almost always some sort of European candy of various um, tastiness. It's, it's somewhat variant. So in this package, uh, we've got some makeup sponges. These are um, one of my new favorite tools, actually. I'm super, super psyched about this. I um, got turned on to this. I was watching a YouTube video by Meg Jimenez, who he mentioned that you should use those for weathering. I really like those if you're interested in oils and enamels for trying to deal with um, getting, getting those oils and enamels back off. So the classic thing is to go in with a Q-tip. I found that on models with rivets and things like that, you got a lot of sort of lingering uh, little fibers and things like that that I, I didn't want in my on my model. I've really enjoyed the uh, the makeup brushes. The nice part about them is they're available in like drugstores and beauty stores and all kinds of things and you can buy them in massive quantities for relatively cheap. I will say you go through them fairly fast um, because they're designed to go over human skin and not over like hard plastic models with rivets and things like that. Uh, so I buy them in staggering quantities. Uh, the last trip I made to Ulta where I bought some, the uh, woman at the checkout counter actually asked me if I owned a nail supply store because I was buying like 300 makeup uh, sponges. I told her very kindly no, that I just build scale models. She then asked me if I was an architect and I then awkwardly had to confess to just being a nerd. Um, so we've got, let's see what else in here. We've got some AK interactive five millimeter um, masking tape. I'm working on some Titanicus stuff right now, so masking tape is always handy for hazard stripes and the like. 
Um, and this is the thing I really like. It looks like they, they sort of broke apart in this. But they introduced this idea called the tutorial tile, which early on in the sort of asset drop line, you get things on a theme, but then it sort of depended on you having a project that would do that thing. So, like... If they had a, a kit on, you know, mossy weathering, you had to have a available sort of kit where you needed to use mossy weathering. In this case, we've actually got these new things that they've been doing for a couple months that are called tutorial tiles, which is now what they're doing, which is these custom-made sort of practice tiles. So in this one, we've got a, sort of a, a bunker opening. Um, so, like, you get to practice rust effects and maybe some chipping stuff. And then you've got this sort of... See if we can get that to focus, this sort of mossy pillar. Um, this is, I think, the best part of the asset drop set is these new tiles. I think I was sort of flagging in my interest on the asset drop kits because there was so much stuff where I was like, yeah, that's really cool. If I ever get around to needing a ghostly green effect on something, I totally have a guide for this. But I was sort of losing interest in it because I, I just wasn't finding myself having those kind of projects. And the introduction of the tiles has sort of made it so like, oh yeah, I can knock that out. I can try this thing. Um, I really like them also. They're fairly, they're, they're made out of resin. They're pretty durable. Um, so one of the other nice parts about it is later you can strip it and you've just got like, this will be really handy for trying out all kinds of things um, as, as time goes on. Let's see, what else have we got in here? Um, so we've got some Hakata Hobby paints. We've got Insignia, ye orange, yellow is, they're not apparently sure what to call this traffic yellow um and insignia red so i've gotten really um fond of the ahakata hobby paints they're uh, i had some in a previous kit that were sort of an olive green and i used those on a sort of imperial guard 40k vietnam uh lookout post as a firm uh imperial fist player i'm sort of excited to try out uh, this yellow. It's nice. They have both sort of brush formulations and airbrush formulations. And honestly, they're pretty compatible just out of the out of the bottle. I haven't had much trouble um them. And then we've got ooh, the scale color that this is the scale 75 people. They're artist uh, acrylic paints. So we've got art white, olive green. I have no idea what these are. I will try to find out later what that is. And light moss green. Um, this is nice because, again, I've been sort of interested in these. Um, there was a really successful Kickstarter, and I never got around to backing the Kickstarter. They're a little bit expensive, and um, so I'm kind of scared of them. And so... I'm glad to have some. I'm also glad that it has, along with it, uh, a guide to using it. Um, so being able to sort of, how do I use those? How do I work with these? Because I find there was a lot of really cool things. I sort of have to wait until there's a tutorial before I, I find the courage to do it. Based on the painting guide, so we have inside your drop, we've got the artist paints, we've got the overgrowth tile, We've got Insignia Red, Insignia Orange Yellow, Traffic Yellow, Masking Tape, Painting Sponges, and the Secret Bunker Tile. Um, I'm not seeing anything on what these are, so I'm going to guess they're candy of some sort. Um, extremely sketchy. If your kid got these on Halloween, I'd be like, mm, but maybe no. So, so we'll, we'll see where we go with that. So moving on to the next box. And the reason I wanted to do this box... Second, is it somewhat more niche? Um, I'll admit. So, and the reason I'm doing this upside down is because my mailing address is on the other side, and while it's blanked out, I know enough about the folks who do computer vision work that I'm paranoid. So, um, this is the, the Heroines box, and really they now do, I believe, Heroines, Heroes, and Monsters, all of which are now sort of jointly themed. So if you want to go sort of all in on... 28 millimeter diorama painting or something like that. I think they've got a really great setup for that. Um, for me, I'm mostly working with the heroines set. Uh, the reason I picked heroines was I'm interested in 
figures for narrative scenarios. So civilians, NPCs, inquisitors, tech priests, things like that. Um, I find that I generally have plenty of those that are male. And so I wanted some sort of non cheesecakey female figures to go along with that. And I wanted to support the, the idea behind it. So this is another thing that often sort of features with um, the asset drop sets is you can get a discount for the stuff that's included in there um, or sort of related things. So the heroine's painting guide for, again, February 2020. Uh, We've got Gretel and Hansel, some resin um, figures that I don't know what they are, a 50 millimeter arcane ruins base. That's the other thing I like is it often comes with a base of some sort. Steampunk cogs and keys basing sheet, um, angel green war paint by the army painter, elemental bolt war paint by the army painter, and crack and skin war paint. So generally speaking, the nice part about the, the guides here is they, they give you sort of a, an introduction to the idea of what you're looking at. And you've got sort of a, a self-contained and coherent set um, where you could just be done. So open this up again. Um, more sketchy club drug tubes. We're going to ignore those. Um, and so this is, this is the base. Um, they've been doing a lot of stuff from Alien Lab miniatures. I actually think they're doing really cool stuff. Um, so this is... I don't remember the name of it, but this is a really great sort of ruined steampunky cog base. That's that's sort of cool. Um, some MDF cogs and gears. Um, mechan Mechanicum players out there, there's probably some use for this in, in your life. And then we have, let's see, Servants of the Engine, Gretel and Hansel, which looks like, yeah, essentially a... Steampunk adventurer type and her monkey familiar, which is pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, this is essentially the sort of type of model you get. They're usually either resin or um, metal from sort of a niche company. So this is Twisted, the Steampunk Miniatures game. I have never seen this played, but they're coming out with really cool models. So if there is someone out there who plays this, do let me know. I think that this is a this is really interesting sort of take on things. I could see her as possibly some sort of inquisitor. Um, that that would be a look that I think would work. You know, archaeotech pistol, some psychic powers out of the hands, maybe a Jacaro familiar with the the monkey. So that's that's definitely doable. Um, and yeah, so I think the the real question with the the heroines line, and then we've got army painter war paints. So we've got angel green, which it's obvious what that should be and then sort of two other shades along that same line. This is usually what the paints end up being for the heroines box, is sort of the, you know, base, shade, and highlight of a, a particular element. And it's usually a pretty good uh, paint company. They're almost always European. Acid Drop is a European company. Um, the Army Painters is Denmark. And again, more, more candy. So that's the end of the review. The one thing I do want to talk about, and when I work on the sort of textual version of this that'll, that'll, be, that'll have this linked, is the question of the, the value of these kits. And they're, they're reasonably expensive. I don't remember the price offhand. I'll put that in the article, and I'll put it in the comments for the uh, video. The question is, is it worth it? And I think the answer for almost all sort of you know, X of the month club sort of things is probably not, but maybe. Um, there's, a, there's a joke in my field that the, the answer to all questions is it depends, and I think the answer is it depends. I have found that on a per value basis, if you were just like, if you added up how much you spent on this and then looked at how much you actually use this hobby stuff, did you break even? I think the answer to that is no. I think that when you sort of sit down and think about it, especially with heroines where I don't have like an active role-playing group that does lots of sort of one-shots and narrative things and things like that, where having an endless supply of sort of monthly new NPCs is something that's of value to me. I don't think that I get my money's worth in that sense. 
where I think these do come up is introducing you to genuinely new products that you haven't used before. So um, Colin Ward and I joke that we have an ongoing dialogue about gray. And some of my favorite grays are Hakata Hobby grays. So this is, um, I have no idea what this is. It's some sort of French uh, gray. And then this is ocean gray. To me, these are very importantly different colors. I get that not everybody shares my opinion on the deep and inherently interesting nature of gray. But um, I have found that I really like those paints. As I mentioned, uh, we've got two paints here that have sort of separated now, but we've got a camouflage green and a medium green. This is what I'm basing a lot of my sort of jungle-themed um, either... 40k Vietnam or also Fallen Eldar World um, sort of paint in. And I would not have found Hakata Hobby without the Asset Drop people. Um, there was, I think it was actually one of these medium greens. And I was like, oh hey, I need a medium green. Because nothing I have in my collection is working well. And they, they had it. Um, I've been exposed to some other things. So I'm going to work on a tutorial soon for my sort of Defense of the Inner Palace um, 3D Printing Terrain Board. Um, a huge portion of that is actually built off of both the Army Painter Green Tone Wash and a actually clay sort of moss ceramic wash um, from, I don't remember who, we'll, we'll get to it when we get to that review. Um, both of those things came in, came in asset drop sets. So I think what it really is, is it's, it's discovering new things. And for that, I think the discovery box is great. I think the heroines box at this point for me is a little bit of an affectation and trying to support the notion of having quality female miniatures that are wearing mostly clothing. Um, and then I do get some, some nice sort of paints out of that. Um, it's especially nice when they're sort of themed along the same lines as the discovery set because I think people do indeed do multiple versions of these boxes. So I think the answer is it depends. I think the uh, set for... Discovery is something that I would continue to do. I sort of go back and forth on whether or not I'm going to continue subscribing to the Heroines um, kit. But these are pretty um, example kits, and I think they are a good illustration of kind of what you get. And then I'm always like a little bit um, excited when I get these. I'm like, oh, you know, I, I, I've been wanting to try these, but I don't want to buy them. Um, I've been wanting to try these things. It's been really handy for things where I'm like, oh, I need a thing. And especially with the heroine set and where the heroine set has come into play is they often include so like this this month again it's these these sort of cogs and keys sets they often include sort of basing accoutrement so i've had um little like vials that are for um you know a, a wizard or something like that and i've ended up using those um to sort of decorate mdf terrain to add some some new interest to that at some point, I had a figure that I wanted to put on a deck plate, but they had a sort of GW mound of rubble on top of it. It was a 30K Apothecary. I think it's the, the Mark IV Apothecary. Uh, so what I ended up doing is, at some point in one of these kits, I got two 3D printed jerry cans. And I was like, yes, I will use the 3D printed jerry can, and that will be my um, solution to this problem. You can hear me looking for something that I can't find right now, but there's a little resin piece that I got in one of them that's a great sort of cogitator for a, a MDF um, Zone Mortalis board to sort of punch that up a little bit scenic-wise. And so there's a lot of things like that where I think that it's not... That was not a good value. I did not get my sort of value per model money's worth out of it. But what there is value in is, is sourcing those things, finding those things, and getting sort of new and novel um, products that you get to try. Um, I think the big challenge with it is then not ending up stockpiling all of it. So there's a, there's a series of sort of brands of stuff where, for example, I have gotten multiple um, from their sets like Turbo Dork Acrylic. Um, this is their Color Shift paint line. Or from uh, AK Interactive, I think this was in a, uh, a one recently, both Crystal Red and Crystal Orange, which there's like, there's multiple color shift paint lines, there's multiple sort of acrylic crystal type lines, I've got other ones from, oh, so th these are Ammo of Make, not AK Interactive, I've got some AK Interactive ones, I've got the Citadel ones, I've got 
some other ones. Um, and I think the answer is you have to be able to try these, try them out in the boxes, and then the ones you don't want, get rid of them. Um, cart them to your club and be like, who wants a ton of paint that I don't want? Or just throw them away, as, as wasteful as that sounds. So I think that's one of the keys, is to, to try this stuff and then sort of resist the, the hobby hoarding temptation, which is something I often fail at. But I think that's the, the real key with these sets, is to sort of discover, play with, like these, these scale color paints. I'm either going to love these and like this is going to be a thing I want to do, or it's not. And if it's not, just get rid of them. Um, I had that happen recently a couple um, months ago. One of the things they included was the Winter uh, Winsor & Newton uh, water-soluble oil paints, which is a really cool idea, but everything else I have isn't water-soluble. So my entire sort of oil wash and enamel pin wash kits are all not water-soluble. So it's not really compatible with how I work because... I'm going to have to figure out, like, okay, what's water-soluble? Do that. Okay, now finish it and use enamels on this other thing and then varnish it again. And I just, I don't have time for that. So I just got rid of that because the answer was, like, that's cool. I'm glad I know it exists. But it doesn't sort of fit with the framework I've got for the hobby. So that's the end of this um, sort of what's in the box review. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you want to see more stuff like this, leave a comment that says, yeah, this is worth doing. If you don't and you're like, just get back to writing articles about math, then um, tell me that too. And have a good day.